The amazing drama you're about to see is a matter of human record. You may believe it or not, but the real people who lived this story, they believe it, they know. They took that one step beyond. It begins here, in the elite bar and grill, with a wedding party. There's not one thing that sets Sally and Matt Conroy apart from all the other couples who were married today in the United States. Not a thing. Not yet. <laughs> that Georgie boy, eh, Matt? He hasn't had that much exercise since he dumped that load of grapefruit up on the ridge road. <laughs> hey, looks like that little gal of yours could keep on dancing all night, Matt. Uh, not if I have anything to say about it. <laughs> Sorry, baby. When I get going, I get carried away. Hey, why don't you take it easy, you big lug? <laughs> you all right, Sal? Oh, I think so. Let's try it again. I was just getting warmed up. Hey, back in the stag line, Georgie boy. You've had it. My turn to dance with the bride. Oh, I'd just love to dance with all you gentlemen again. Yeah, right? but they won't hold our room after nine if, well, if we don't get there. Oh, that'd be a shame. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, we want to thank you for the party, fellas. Just watch one last round for the road on me. Hey, Tommy, say, how'd Conroy ever find you down among those bayous, honey? Well? He transported my cousin's belongings when she moved back home a couple months ago. And, well, one thing led to another. Here I am. How do you like it? Oh, I love it. I've never been northeast or west of Louisiana before in my entire life. Well, no one would know it in the way you talk, honey child. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Sal, let's get going. Well, thanks again for the party, fellas. Say, Matt, don't we get a chance to kiss the bride? Yeah! <laughs> sorts of funny faces and funny noises. Did I look awful? You couldn't look awful if you tried. Of course, you look a lot better when you're smiling. How much further is it? Why? Why are you going to be so tired from all this driving? I mean, I sure wish I knew how to drive so I could help you. You're just going to have to learn, that's all. Nutty for somebody to live in California and not know how to drive a car. What's the matter? Huh? What's the matter? I don't know. Nothing. Those crazy guys down at Tommy's, you sure knocked them for a loop. I guess you know that. Of course, you kind of knocked me for a loop, too. I tell you, I'm sure glad your cousin decided to go back to Louisiana and call NorCal Van and Storage. Matt, if we turn left about a mile ahead, it's a prettier drive. How'd you know that? It's beautiful and wild and secluded. There's a hill straight ahead, just past those pines. Go up the hill. Well, how in the world did never you Never know... mind, never mind. Point's just ahead. Eagle Point? Turn right. Be careful. There's a fallen tree across the road. Hey, wait for me!
Sally. Sally, what's the matter with you? Sally, what in the world's the matter with you? Who are you? Oh, come on, Sally, stop kidding. Will you please take your hands off me? Sally. Sally! I don't know, her voice sounded so different, she looked so different. I don't know. Well, there aren't many roads through here. Shouldn't take us long to find her. How would she know about a place like this? She's never been up here before in her life, I'm sure of it. Why would she kid me about driving a car? She looks so different. Now that's mighty strange. What are the lights doing on in the warden place? Is that your car? Yeah. I wonder what Sally's doing here. Beats me, mister. Who lives here? Nobody now. Well, how come the electricity's still on? You say it hasn't been settled yet. The girl who used to live here jumped from a place called Eagle Point a couple of weeks ago. Eagle Point? Kind of gives me the creeps, a nice girl like that committing suicide. What a mess. Had to make identification from dental records and stuff like that. No! No! No. What are you trying to do? Scare me to death? I didn't. You know what I ought to do, I you silly didn't. dame? I ought to belt I you one. I didn't kill myself. Sally! I didn't, Sally! I didn't, Jeff. I was Sally. murdered! I was murdered! I was murdered! I was Sally. murdered! Sally. How much longer is this going to go on? Is what going to go on, Mr. Conroy? Every time she wakes up, it's another sedative, another shot. Is that the only thing you can do for her, keep her asleep? Yes, Mr. Conroy. It's been 24 hours. Look, I could feed her sleeping pills myself. Mr. Conroy, your wife was quite violent when you brought her in here, quite incoherent. Every time she wakes up, she tries to run away. Now, how would you suggest that we restrain her? Would you prefer a straight jacket? You haven't even told me what's wrong with her. Well, what's wrong with her? I don't know. Well, when will you know? Do you see that library? Every mental and emotional disturbance known to medicine is described somewhere in these books. Your wife's case is not among them. 
Well, then I'll just have to go to some other hospital where there'll be somebody who can help her. That's your privilege, Mr. Conroy. I don't think it will solve anything. I'm going to be quite frank with you. That young woman you brought in here is not That young to be... woman? What do you mean, that young woman? She's my wife. She's not just... Your some... wife. Does this sound like your wife? Alex, I've told you there's no time. Why are you doing this to me? Why are you keeping me here? To try to make you well, Mrs. Conroy. Why do you keep calling me that? Because that's your name. My name is Karen. You know that. Alex, please, why won't you help me? I'm trying to help you, Mrs. Conroy. There is no Karen Horton. Karen Horton is dead. Karen Horton committed suicide. No! No! I was murdered! You must believe me! I was please. murdered! I was murdered! Alex, please, Alex! There isn't any Quick, time! Nurse. Why won't you help me? Quick, please, nurse. please, please! Alex, Alex, listen to me. Listen to me. I'll be calm. I promise. Please, Alex, I'll be calm. I'll be calm. My name is Karen Wharton. I was born in Fort Washiki, Wyoming, on February 10th, 1935. My mother's name is Mary Louise. My father, Philip Joseph Wharton, died of pneumonia on April 12th, 1939. Your wife, Ellen, drowned at the 4th of July picnic in 1941 at Lake Etna. And four years ago, at the Harvest Moon Ball at the Country Club, you asked me to marry you, Alex. Never mind, nurse. Who murdered you? Dan Stapler. Dan Stapler? Why? Because I wouldn't give him a divorce. Dan Stapler isn't married. We were married secretly last year in Mexicali. Why secretly? You know why. Mother hated him. And she was right. His passion cooled considerably when he found out that none of Daddy's money was in my name. Then why didn't you give him a divorce? Because I loved him. I would have been anything he wanted me to be if he'd only loved me. I can't tell you how mortifying it was. How revolted I was when I saw him at the beach with other women. And at parties. I loathed him and I loathed myself because later, when he'd come to me, Touch me. Regarding your inquiry, Daniel Stapler married to Karen Horton, this city, June the 11th, 1956. Mexicali Hall of Records. Well, can't there be some sort of explanation? Maybe she read about the death in a newspaper. Well, couldn't it just be a coincidence? Well, what is it? Some sort of psychic hocus-pocus or something? Is that what you're trying to tell me? You'd hardly expect a psychiatrist to tell you a thing like that. Why did he murder you? Because he found somebody who did have money. That night. That night. Go on. It had been weeks since I'd seen him. He dropped by that night without any notice at all. And the famous stapler charm was in full bloom again. And of course, I fell for it again. Dan always had a divine sense of timing. He told me his real reason for the visit, that he wanted a divorce. While he was making love to me, I told him I'd never divorce him, not ever. And then he behaved like a six-year-old child having a temper tantrum. He cried out that I cheated him, ruined his life. He stomped his feet and his voice screeched like a petulant woman. He looked so ridiculous. He suddenly looked so ridiculous that I started to laugh. I suppose it was hysteria more than anything else, but I couldn't stop. He turned very white and came at me. He struck me with his fist. And before I could tell him that 
Yes, 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 you can have your divorce. He killed me. How? It wasn't a pleasant death, Alex. I didn't die quickly. Finally, he crushed my skull with with something heavy. And then he took my body to Eagle Point and flung it off the edge to make it appear a suicide. Alex, do you believe me? How can I, Mrs. Conroy? But you must! I'm not Mrs. Conroy! He murdered me! I can prove it! I can prove it! Alex, listen to me! I can prove it! I can make you... Let me go! I can make you believe me! Let me go! Listen to me, Alex! No! 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 What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Yes? We'll be right up. Your wife's awake. Dr. Slauson, let me go in first. Honey, are you feeling better? Alex, I want to call my mother. Your mother in Louisiana? Alex, please, don't start that again. Please let me call my mother. Why? Because she'll believe me. Will she? Yes. I think perhaps I'd better call her, don't you? It's going to be an awful shock. Tell her I want to see her. It's all right if I get dressed, isn't it? I don't want her to see me like this. I must look terrible. Yes. Get dressed. You know, Sal, we, uh, we promised your cousin Diana we were going to wire her right after the ceremony. Only in all the confusion down at Tommy's... Would you mind leaving so I can get dressed? Did you call her mother? I mean, Mrs. Wharton. No. No, I didn't. Mr. Conroy, I'm going to try something drastic. You gave me this a long time ago, remember? Of course I remember, Alex. There been much change in five years? Five years is a long time. Did you call my mother? Not yet. In case you've forgotten, the number's 5211. I remember. Will you call her now? Why don't you rest for a while? I'll take care of it. Miss Peterson. I'm so glad to see you. 
Alex won't believe me. No one will believe me. They're treating me like I'm insane. Mother, please help me. Tell them who I am. Tell them who I am. Who are you? Who are you and why are you doing this to me? Why are you doing this to me? Here, take these. When she put her arms around me, it was Karen. I know it was. And it was Karen's voice. Oh. But she is dead, Doctor, isn't she? Yes, Karen is dead, Mrs. Wharton. Doctor, Mrs. Conroy is gone. Something heavy. With something heavy. now. We start with this. The police, Dan Stapler. Oh, I mean about her. I don't know about her. Mm. Hi, darling. Matt, is something wrong? Not now. Now, we got lost for a while, but we're all right now. We're going to be married a long time, Mrs. Conroy, and it, it, it's going to take me a long time to... Oh, thanks. Nice technical word, but what happened to Sally Conroy? It's called possession. That is, the dead temporarily taking over the body of the living. Terrifying? It terrified Dan Stapler into a quick and full confession. There are thousands of cases of possession in the records, many of them fully authenticated by respected scientists. We've seen one. To whom it happened, we know. Where it happened, we know. How or why it happened. Good night. Whether or not you believe that coming events cast their shadows before them, be with us next week when five different people, totally unknown to each other, see the hideous shadow of a great disaster weeks, days, hours before it happens. This heretofore untold drama comes from the testimony of those who took that one step beyond.